hey, hey, we got a Honda VTX 1800 O2 we're going to be putting the clutch in today. Uh, a couple of quick tips and stuff to go over, and uh, eh, we won't ramble on too much. But anyways, we got a nice Barnett clutch here in the, in the box, and uh, first things that you're going to be doing on this guy is ripping them out of your box. You're going to take them out, and if you love instructions, maybe you should read them. Because the most important thing that uh, can be skipped over real easy here is that these plates need to be soaked prior to installation. You do not ever install wet type clutch installed dry without soaking them. It's a quick tip to, uh, quick way to go ahead and have to put another clutch in there real quick. So, took them out of the box, got them soak them in a uh, bag of motorcycle oil. Yes, motorcycle oil, not automotive shit in your motorcycle. So we got them in there, we found and twirled them around. We've gotten all the oil down to the places that need to be done. Spin them around a little bit, and then we're just gonna let him chew you in there for a little while while we go ahead and remove some of our parts. Now I'm not gonna show you removal of exhaust because everybody's exhaust is gonna be different. They're all gonna have about the same amount of bolts, but you know what? If you don't know how to take exhaust off, you don't know how to be doing this clutch either. So there we go. Got the exhaust off here. We're starting to take off some of these covers. Uh, to get to some other bolts that are hidden there and um, what you're going to find out here is that uh, you pop this cover off you're going to be losing oil so two ways you could do this one drain your oil out until you think you got enough out or two we can lean this bike all the way over on its side and uh, possibly you know scrape shit up so uh, option three is just make a mess um, i typically don't like to make a big mess so i'm probably going to be draining out some of this oil for a little bit and uh, i'm thinking Probably at least two quarts are going to be okay, uh, maybe less. So we will see because the majority of the oil is going to be actually down lower than this. So I uh, might just pop the cover and see what happens. But you don't like making a mess? Drain some oil out, you'll be good to go. Um, some other things to keep in mind here is clearances and stuff and not wanting to scratch stuff up. So if this is not your bike, take care of it. Uh, if it is your bike, do whatever the hell you want. Um, let's talk about other things needed. We've got our bag of goodies here. What do we got? We've got some Fippage, RTV, whatever the hell you want to call it. Gray stuff. Don't get the black stuff. It ain't going to look good. You're going to look like a moron. It's gray that was there. Use the gray. You won't see this big black line. Uh, Permatex does make a motorcycle type gasket that's supposedly oil resistant and fuel resistant. So a lot of stuff is, but hey, if you want to go get your Honda Bond, you can do that as well. I believe this was about $8.50. Uh, I think Honda Bond was just a little bit more expensive, but Honda is about 40 miles away from me. <clears throat> we got some brake cleaner because you're going to make a mess. And we've got some more oil because we know we're going to be losing. So I bought three quarts of oil. Um, I'm not thinking I'm going to be losing that much, but I did use about a half a quart in that bag over there where our clutch discs are soaking right now. So, you're basically ready to do your clutch. Have you ever done one of these? If you haven't, well, you're about to maybe learn a little bit of something. Uh, some important tools you're going to need. Your hands, random tools, and a torque wrench that does inch pounds. A torque wrench that does inch pounds. A service some type of service information to find out your torques because these bolts break by dumbasses that don't know what a torque spec means and if your torque wrench only goes down to 10 inch pounds and you think that's okay the lowest score on your torque wrench is the most inaccurate just keep that in mind for all you dumbasses that keep breaking bolts sorry to be a little bit harsh there but I keep seeing these upgraded bolts and stuff you, you people buy. Just torque your shit properly. Use your torque wrench right. You ain't going to break it. And you're going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to remove these fancy dancy covers here. We'll get to the big old rubber donut behind here. And some other bolts. So let me go ahead and skip forward. We will go past all the boring stuff because, come on. You all know how to take bolts off. I don't need to be counting how many there are. You look around everywhere. You make sure you didn't miss one. And then we go to the pry spot. The bang spot. Whatever spot. We'll be back. Okay, we got the big old uh, rubber donut in our face now. We can take a look at a couple things here. Um, this guy. 
little plug there. Checking all your uh, timing and stuff there. Top dead center, doing valve adjustments, yada, yada, yada. So there's a couple things to keep in mind here is that we've got a big old vibration dampener that, uh, just leave them in here. Don't, don't try taking them out. We've got some rubber for vibration and some rubber here as well. So make sure that they all stay there. Don't look at them wrong. They should stay there. Um, but while we remove this big cover, we can start to see some more bolts. Why Honda decided to not just put a cover on here? I don't know. It looks like one of my plugs did stay there. So I'm going to have to remove all those plugs, it looks like now, if I don't lose them. So let's just do that. They belong in here. All these fancy little rubber donuts for vibration. Let's stick them back on there. Got a couple on the bottom here. Somewhere. I know I seen them. There we go. Down up under here. Two. And three. What EV hold them on? So, anyways, we're gonna leave a little rubber little donut on there and let's get to pulling some bolts. We've got pretty much every single bolt out, except for two. And the reason I'm leaving two in <clears throat> is that if this thing starts leaking just a little bit more than I want it to, we're going to go ahead and zip that guy back in a little bit. Other than that, every bolt is out. Now, as far as tappity tap tap on this guy, they usually just don't come out that great. Um, but we're going to try and use it less. So, you do have different bolts of different lengths in here, and just keep that in mind. come out like that. So, as far as tappity tap taps, we do have a small surface area here, a small little surface area there. Um, unfortunately, I did not give you a pry. No, I take that back. There is a very small little pry hole um, that I will show you here, which is just a little bit uh, concerning for some of y'all that might get in here and... Uh, Gorilla grip the shit out of that one. So um, this is very small stuff we're talking about. You do this very lightly, and uh, you work your way around. So let me go get a small little flathead. And all we're going to be doing is just putting them in here and twisting them a little bit. See if we can get anybody to wake up. Because this is all held together with RTV. And we do have another little tappity tap spot right there that I think I'm going to go ahead and try. So on this bottom left corner, we do have a small little area. Tap and tap. And we're not getting anywhere with that guy. So let's move on. Let me get my number two pry bar. We have a small little lip on this back corner that does not a sealing surface. So we're just going to real lightly put a little pressure on him and tap. Do you want it out here? Nope. Right. 
as stuck as I figured it would be. And we got some locating dowels that sometimes stick to. Let's see where else we have a lip that they so graciously gave us. And one right here. So, just a very slight pressure. Okay, it does seem like we're getting a different tone there, so I think stuff is happening. There we go. Just a little tappity tap tap is all you need. You don't have to go crazy. So we are starting to leak a little bit of oil here. Like I said, I don't know how much I think we're going to be losing here. Um, but uh, we're just going to slowly let him go. We're not going to uh, go any crazy. But if you've noticed that slightly different tone of how it became a little bit hollower, um, that's when you know things are starting to happen, starting to release. Um, this is... This is by far not the worst gluing situation I've ever seen with RTV, Fippage, whatever you want to call it. Um, this wasn't bad, so. And I wanted to keep this in there just to not be ashamed of how to do things. So as you see, I've got two bolts still in here, and I didn't really lose much oil. And that's why I didn't really want to uh, drain any out yet. I wanted to see how bad we were. As you see, we've got two different length bolts here. So we're on those locating dowels now. I'm not hardly prying. I'm just using this as a lever that I can wiggle against. Not prying. We don't want to screw up that sealing surface. I'm still stuck on that one dowel pin here. Same thing, just going to put him in there and use him as leverage to push against. So there we go. Hardly lost any oil. I do like that. I'll go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. We don't have to leave oil all over the floor. Put him to the side. So there we go. We do have a little bit of a pool down here that... Uh, I might actually just scoop out with my finger. And here we go. See the whole clutch and it's glory. Um, first thing, you know, we're going to just look for any visual defects or issues before we go any farther because uh, if we got an issue, then we're going to have to order some parts, I think. Everything else looks, uh, looks good. So, our next basic step is uh, let's go ahead and remove this uh, off of there. So, make things a little bit easier. Make sure the vehicle, or the, not the vehicle, I'm used to working on vehicles. Let's make sure he's in gear, which he is. It's going to make it a little bit easier to remove these uh, retainers for the springs. And we're going to work our way around in a circle. So, we're going to loosen. I already did pre-loosen a couple of these. This one I didn't think I broke loose yet. There we go. There we go. So now that they're loose, we're just going to work ourselves around. Once we get these out a little bit more. Now, if you're going to be reusing your springs, that's solely based on you. If you have no way to test your tension of your springs, um, my recommendation really on these is to uh, replace the springs. Don't just buy a clutch pack. Uh, do a whole kit. Uh, I guess these springs are pretty notorious for not really being strong enough. Now, I'm not really expecting to see a lot of wear on this clutch. Just my going guess is that uh, these springs are definitely just not good enough for the job needs to be done. I'm at 120 foot-pounds of torque on this guy pushing, well, with the motorcycle 
in me about a thousand pounds. Accessories, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. So I'm just kind of doing these up, getting them somewhat even. Uh, this is definitely important if you're reusing your strings. You don't want to uh, go too crazy and lose any of their strength, I guess. But just my habit. You got multiple things in which are one thing. I do like to do them in, uh, in some sort of fashion. Here. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where we're at with that. We've got enough tension off of it. I'm going to go ahead and just do this a little bit quicker. Somewhat even here. So we're almost all the way on tension. Okay, there's that one. Uh, bolts all the way loose. We're going to go ahead and take them off. And we're left with some goodies here. I'm going to have to probably use two hands on this one. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and check our run out here. Not a run out, or uh, I guess our how would they call this bearing? We'll check the bearing. How about that? I'm not in for any uh, specific terminology right now. This is our actual rod here. Should go and check the terminals are there. Let's take a look at this clutch because you know what? Like I was saying, this looks still pretty good. This job honestly could have been solved the uh, slippage that I had with uh, just putting some new clutch springs on. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get up in here replace just the springs and not take care of a new clutch. Yeah, I mean, these um, these have a lot of life left here. Let's see if we can get in on this. There we go. As you see, Nice amount of life left on it. Uh, even the uh, the steels, friction surface, and the steels are uh, the plates are all looking pretty good here. Maybe we'll throw it on eBay. How about that? Throw them on eBay, and somebody can get a, a two dollar new clutch kit, a used clutch kit for their uh, VTX. Remove these guys out. Keep in mind which ones are going first. Now, a lot of you don't know this, but this is actually part of the clutch. If this is worn out here, if we've had a lot of gouging going on, um, then you're going to have to replace this part. Same thing with the basket itself. This is a friction surface, um, friction plates, then your metal steels, friction plate, vice versa. They get flip flopped together. And uh, this one, it's got a little bit of scoring, but not bad. If we were to keep riding this uh, the way it was, we would eventually just make them toast. But, bearing feels nice and good, had no noise, as when I compressed the clutch. So, what I'd like to do is try to keep everything together. way I can actually see if there was any wear issues and where was it. To get my uh, little pick out. And get my fat little sausage fingers in there. So 
how we see a little bit of burning on this guy. A little toasty. Just a little bit of wiggling here and you can work them all the way out. Also probably a magnet would work as well. But I don't feel like getting back up. Obviously the magnet won't work because it's aluminum. see the other, the last part of the friction surface here. And not horrible. I think we're going to be just fine here. Let's take a peek in there. Wipe off all this oil off my hands. So, there we go. A little bit of scourge there. But you got to remember, we've got multiple surfaces here. So, um, but this last part of our basket and our, um, I forgot the actual term for this centerpiece there, but he is a uh, wearable item surface. Same thing with the front part of our clutch pack assembly. So, as you can see, inner compared to the outer. Inner one there, a little bit more burnt. Um, and this is what uh, will succumb to your pockets being a little bit more emptier by the end of this job, if that is uh, definitely going to have to be replaced. So, But we're going to get away with that this time. So, we got our new clutch soaking over there. We're going to go ahead and get some new parts out and uh, get through this. All right, so uh, before we go ahead and start putting everything back together, we're going to come in here with a little razor blade, and we're just going to clean up this surface. And then we'll go ahead and take a small little wire brush and get rid of all the leftover stuff. It's important not to really scratch this surface up, so do your due diligence, or whatever the heck you want to call it, and don't fuck it up pretty easy. Start off with um, a lighter coarse brush and see what we can do with that. It doesn't look like that's gonna really help me with anything. So let me get my steel one. Because there's such a small amount on here, it really shouldn't take all too long. We're just trying to get it down to that nice shiny surface again and get all the leftover sealant off. Now these uh, edges are sharp, so make sure you're uh, trying to keep all your fluids inside your body. Alright, so I'm sitting on the ground just like you would be. Um, went ahead and we're cleaning up this surface here, same thing. Wire brush it a little bit. Um, there are locating pins here on the sides, which you just can't see there. Let me move it. Um, we've got one here. And we got one right here, which you can't see either. There we go. This guy's. So you're going to have some uh, sealant up around the sides here. Definitely try to get all that stuff out of here. What I did notice is that some little imperfections in... Um, the actual ceiling surface here. You can actually see that there. Come on, focus. Focus on me. There we go. You see those? Yeah, those are actually pits in there. I'm surprised Honda let that go like that. Um, so, after we went ahead and we've uh, wire brushed it, we're just going to clean with a little bit of uh, brake cleaner to get off any leftover stuff. And we're going to go ahead 
and clean up any stuff that we've got that fell down up in here. Wouldn't be a really bad thing to just um, spray this thing out, which I think I'm just going to go ahead and do here. So let's get my uh, basket of stuff over here. Let's just spray them out a little bit. We don't want this stuff going into our crankcase there. And as you see, a piece of uh, leftover RTV came flying out. I'm going to try to keep any of this brake cleaner stuff off of this painted surface. We don't know what uh, what's going to happen to it, so... All right, so let's just quick little spray out there. Let's wipe her down. Check for any leftover RTV. And this guy will be ready to get smooged up and put back on. One last good wipe down here on the surface. We want him free of all oils. I do see just a little bit of leftover stuff here. Scrape them to the outside. That's why it's always good to do one more look over. But there's only one way to put this thing back on, and that's the right way. All right, let's start putting this baby back together here. So, we got our good old bag of stuff just sitting here, marinating. Let's weeble wobble up in here and try not to make too much more of a mess. So, we're alternating. We have our first uh, steel in the back here, which is part of our actual uh, clutch, um, basket and everything. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a friction surface on. Alternate that with steel. Another one. Try to get my fat little finger stuck in there. And we're just going to keep alternating. See, all these are generously soaked in oil. That way, we don't have a dry start. I wish you could get the clutches from cars like this. Wouldn't that be nice? Would be nice. One more steel. And I got oil on me. Yeah. And one more. Friction. So we're left with the friction on the end because we've got this front surface right here. We're going to make sure we got some nice oil sitting all over them. Dress them up a little bit. And make sure he gets centered on there. Double check that our pivot area and all that stuff is all seated. He's indexed in there, which he is. Let's get some springs going here. Now these are the uh, springs that came with the Barnett kit. They are 2 and 5 eighths length from my measurement compared to the OEMs, which uh, about 2 and a quarter the worn ones were. So 
These are without a doubt got some more oomph for this clutch to keep them from doing the same thing. So I am just making a mess everywhere here. Now you know. Let me get my rug. Okay. Make sure you don't cross thread any of these guys going in. Yeah, that looks like to be the easiest way. So we're just gonna run these guys in. A little bit at a time. Making sure our springs stay somewhat centered here because they don't bind. Because we're gonna get to a point where we're not gonna be able to recenter these. to the point where got about a quarter inch or less left. Hmm. And the mailman's here. Hey mailman. How's it going man? How you doing? Good man. You gotta say hi to me. You gotta say hi. This is just to hardly feel it bottom. That's it. We're not going any further. comes the part I tell you all that you probably do not have a very important tool for this job that is an inch pounds or Newton meter torque wrench I've already taken the pleasure of setting him to 12 Newton meters I have two different scales up on here for which you'll never be able to see I guarantee you um, but yes we are set at 12 Newton meters and what I'm going to do is just barely crank these down so they get a little bit of turning out of them. I'm not clicking them yet. That one's clicked. Clicked. Done. I don't know if I can hear yet. And I'm using the palm of my hand. I'm not trying to put my whole fist into this thing and gorilla grip the damn thing. Okay, so now we're just going to work in a circle. I tell you right now, there is not a lot of torque that needs to be applied to these things. There we go. Yeah, just keep 
on drip that he drip drip. Maybe I'll just put a rag here for now. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to let him uh, chill and uh, relax for a little bit. And let him stop dripping. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you the right way to put this uh, sealant on this thing because there's only one way to do it. It's the right way. If you do it wrong, you're going to be leaking oil. All right, so let's take a peek at this real quick here because uh, a lot of you all think more is better, but sometimes uh, you're wrong. Okay, so for sealant on here, we are talking about 0.2 to 0.3 of a millimeter thickness. We can actually take a look at what they're talking about, I mean, uh, for height. And um, it's not a lot of sealant. We're not going to schmoo the crap out of this thing. Now, I do understand sometimes it is hard to get that little bit... Uh, even cutting the smallest amount over here is still a pretty big hole. But we can try our damnedest to uh, get this as right as possible. Let's try to make this a little bit straighter here. So, let's see if we can do this without making a mess. Pre uh, schmoo this thing to get our stuff to the top. There we go. stuff is very thin compared to uh, normal RTV. I'm having a hard time to really get that small amount on here. But we're going to try. It's not the end of the world if you get a little more than you need, but the idea is to try to keep it to a correct uh, amount, I guess you'd call it. Otherwise, you're just going to squeeze all this crap out. And just look at any places where you think you need a little just a bit more. Yep, 
That's a little too much. But I pat myself on the back for it. Let's take a look. So we're not concerned with this outer sides. We're only doing the insides. Looks like... Is that just the camera? Or? Yep, that's just the camera. That looks all good there. Alright. So. Let's put this daddy back on. So one last time, let's uh, clean up our surface, especially down on this bottom here, because unfortunately, that's where all the oil is going to be sitting, and just keeps fucking drifting down at you, you little bastard. You stay dry for a couple minutes there. Find this spot on the rag here. Just make sure this bottom. This is the most important part. Is all this stuff down here? Well. It's all important. I'm going to do one last dip on this guy, wipe off what I can. Get a couple screws ready here, the bolts. Wipe them off one more time. And let's get them on. This is important that we do not smack him on anything and lose our sealant here. There we go. We're in. Like see. Or Flynn, whoever you know. Well, that one is just a little too short. We need a long daddy here. So all I'm going to do for the time being is just... Just... Bottom them out. That's it. Just bottom them out. That one's too long. He went down here. Yep. Just about him and out. started here. Find these long guns. Get a couple around here. So all your long guys are going to be going up around this large case here on the sides. Obviously because it's the thickest. Sums it up right there. You don't need one of these guys, but it sure does help. Okay, so we got the cover on. Let's go ahead and uh, torque all these guys down here. Doing 10 uh, newton meters on these guys. It's more than enough. Of 
unfortunately, uh, I see nothing in the service manual. And these guys are only holding a cover on, so. But I'd like to make stuff even. That stuff is on, good to go. If you remember, we took all the rubber guys off of here, and that one was pinched in from probably the factory, I'm guessing. So we got all that stuff on here. Let's uh, rock and roll. We have our special collared rubber bolts here. Those guys are going to be going on this cover. Now these are collared and stuff like that because we don't want to be cracking and warping any of this thing so they're rubber holding it with a steel shim and that gives us a nice uniform fit here because this is just a fancy dancy make me pretty cover and that is it same thing just going to use this guy to run them down For this clutch job today here on this uh, O2 Honda VTX 1800 and uh, all its glory. So we're going to go ahead and uh, rip her a couple times. No, I'm joking. We're going to slowly just kind of break the clutch in a little bit uh, for a couple miles. Be easy on it. Make sure we get some nice lubrication all in there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm ready to twist that throttle. So anyways, did hope you enjoy. If you did, give me a good old thumbs up. If you didn't, I don't care anyways. Catch you next time.